Hi everybody, uh, my name is uh, Giorgio Cracchiolo and I'm an Italian uh, medical student, uh, fifth out of six years, uh, from, uh, originally from Catania, Italy, but uh, I actually live in Bergamo, uh, which is in Lombardy, totally opposite side of Italy. So um, uh, when they asked me to prepare the presentation, they told me it was going to be a letter to Atticus. Basically, uh, I'm going to talk about myself, but put lots of pictures and... Uh, uh, I'll start from where I come from. I uh, like uh, I'll cover the basics. So that's Europe, and that's uh, where I'm from, Italy. Uh, but uh, I was born in Sicily, and uh, uh, this here is uh, my city, Catania, uh, which is a pretty cool city. And um, uh, this is my favorite spot in Catania. I usually go there running. You know, it's like 15. Uh, kilometers or something like that. And it's it's very beautiful city. It has the sea, uh, it has Mount Etna, which uh, should be actually uh, the uh, tallest volcano in um, uh, in all of Europe. Uh, it's pretty active volcano. It uh, frequently erupts and it's pretty cool. It's a pretty nice city. This spot is my favorite one. You can see the whole city uh, nicely uh, light, lighted up uh, with, when there's the sunset and that's where I usually go. And uh, those are some other pictures uh, from, uh, from the port of Catania. And uh, uh, those are uh, called Aci Castello and Aci And those are two cool towns, uh, ne like 10 minutes uh, driving from, uh, from the city center of Catania. And this is a castle that uh, was built from uh, Federico II of Svevia. Uh, well, uh, these rocks actually have a really cool legend. Uh, there's a, they're supposed to be the rocks that uh, the Cyclope, Poly, Polyphemo, uh, actually uh, uh, threw at Ulysses uh, in the Odyssey uh, when he was escaping Sicily. But uh, yeah, so this is, this is actually pretty cool. You can go there, dive and uh, kayak and like, uh, like uh, just go swimming. And uh, this is the this is Etna, the, vol the volcano I was talking to you about. It's very close by. It's like 40 minutes drive together. And uh, it's pretty active and uh, often erupts, but it's not dangerous. And um, uh, actually, the biggest eruption I ever seen, probably anyone uh, still alive now has ever seen, is uh, it was like two years ago. Uh, rocks started raining, kind of. It was pretty crazy. Nothing dangerous, but uh, kind of bad for, for your car because uh, just ruined lots of cars because pretty big rocks were raining from the sky, basically. And um, those are some other cool pictures from on, on top of Etna. Uh, I usually go there with my friends often, uh, with my dog also. And uh, this is called uh, Sant'Agata. It's, um, uh, it's a festivity that actually happened uh, very, uh, very close to now, like uh, beginning of February. And uh, there's millions of people. It's pretty cool. And uh, the saint actually... Uh, uh, lived uh, in during the Roman Empire, and uh, there's uh, numerous legends around the saint. Uh, the veil is supposed to have been stopped uh, to to have stopped the, the uh, lava from destroying Catania. Actually, uh, so there's millions of people gathering for uh, for this festivity. It's pretty cool. And uh, this is my family, and I've got uh, still still got my grandma and uh, my two aunts, my sister, uh, little sister, and my parents. And this is my dog Mia. Uh, she's a girly and she's uh, about to be six years old. I rescued her from a dog shelter uh, when she was a little bit younger than uh, one year old. And um, yeah, those are some more pictures of me and my some of my friends in Catania. Uh, those are on Mount Etna and that's a picture of me while I was still playing rugby before moving to the north of Italy. And uh, those are some other pictures of me and my friends on the sea. On Etna, yeah, I told you, we often go hiking. And those are some other, I hope you had breakfast because uh, I put lots of pictures of food because we are famous for that, in my opinion. And uh, those are called arancini. Uh, those are, it's fried rice. And you can stuff them with whatever, spinach, eggplants, my favorite is eggplants or also ragu. And uh, those are some other more pictures of pasta and uh, uh, seafood, more pasta. And pastry is my favorite. Uh, I love pastries, and we have like the I think the biggest variety in all of Italy, probably. And uh, yeah, those are some pictures. And then, uh, so that was where I was born. This is where I moved, totally opposite side of Italy. It's like two hours uh, by plane, something about that. Ten hours by car, uh, more or less. 
And uh, so um, uh, I'm attending the School of Medicine and Surgery, which is actually in Bergamo. My university is called University of Milano Bicocca. The, uh, uh, the place where it is, uh, the, the main uh, campus is, is Milan, but uh, Italian medicine is in Monza, which is a city nearby, and English medicine is in Bergamo. My exams and my lessons are all in English. And yeah, and we are in uh, Papa Giovanni 23rd Hospital, uh, which was named af after a pope uh, that was born in Bergamo. And it's a pretty huge hospital. The city is pretty nice. It's pretty quiet compared to Catania, in which you find pretty much anything to do on every day of the week. And, uh, but it's a pretty nice city, small. You, can, you have time to study and there's a nice quiet. And uh, yeah, those are some more pictures. I often go hiking there and uh, there's mountains all over. Uh, I, can, I, I kind of miss the sea because there's, there's no sea there and it's not that close by. It's not like 10 minutes drive like where I come from. And yeah, this is the main campus of my university in Milan. And um, instead, this is my actual campus in Bergamo. And uh, this is the hospital. It has, it's a pretty big hospital. It has seven towers and uh, one main big tower in the middle where you'll find a neuroradiology department with CT scans, MRIs. Then you have the ICUs, neuro, cardio, and general. And uh, we also have all the ORs, I think about... 25 ORs, more or less. Uh, neurosurgery, I, I attend the neurosurgery department. I started attending the neurosurgery department uh, since I was in the second year of uh, med, med school. So it's been already three years now, three years or something more than that. And um, uh, the neurosurgical department has more or less two ORs. Uh, they, op they, op they can become three ORs, uh, one for spine, one for the head and uh, uh, one optional uh, for uh, trauma. And um, uh, it's a pretty big hospital. Uh, uh, that's the hospital street. And uh, those are some other views. There's gardens all around it. And it's pretty nice. We have uh, two arms, fluoro, intraoperative MRI, intraoperative CT scan, and uh, two or three Da Vinci's. Uh, usually they're used uh, by the uh, urology department or uh, gynec or general surgery, but uh, we are hoping that we can start using them uh, also. Um, they should buy a new one, I think. Uh, I show them like the work that uh, Dr. Barzilai is doing at Sloan Kettering, that, so it could be useful to have one uh, to use on dumbbell tumors or all this kind of stuff. And uh, those are some other view. This is the ICU and a view of the hospital street, or that's how it is called, the street that uh, connects the seven towers. And we also have the a landing zone for the helicopter. And uh, so talking uh, more about myself, uh, I chose spine surgery. Uh, I loved neurosurgery since before I got into med school, but actually chose spine surgery because I think it's a pretty cool uh, subspecialty. Uh, it has to um, uh, deal with the entirety of the uh, body because you go from the craniovertebral junction to the sacrum basically, and you can go anterior, posterior, lateral. You're basically exposed to the anatomy of the whole body. And what I love about it is that you can go from uh, using a hammer and a scalpel to perform an osteotomy to then uh, taking out with microsurgical instrument an intramedullary tum tum tumor or uh, uh, suturing a dural tear uh, with a 70 or 60 proline and stuff like that. So it's very you need to be very versatile. And for this reason, I always imagine spine surgeons, neurosurgeons in general, as uh, uh, Navy SEALs. That's that's how can, kind of kind of how I see this specialty. I kind of see them as Navy SEAL that need to be trained to deal with desert environment, uh, cold environment, snow and, uh, and water and whatever uh, comes up um, uh, on their way. And um, at the same time, spine surgeons also need to be engineers kind of because you always need to be familiar with the instrumentation and uh, you always need to have a plan, multiple backup plans and uh, need to understand properly the biomechanics of a uh, the normal biomechanics of the spine, but also the pathological biomechanics of the spine and plan accordingly your surgical plan so that your construct doesn't ultimately fail. So I kind of see uh, spine surgeons also as engineers, but also a bit like a Sherlock Holmes because so you, you have to 
uh, deal with different kinds of stuff and it's ultimately very difficult to find the pain generators and you need to be uh, accustomed to using all kinds of tricks to uh, like um, uh, to understand what's causing the pain of the patient and a little bit a med scientist because you always need to experiment the field is uh, innovating so much uh, there's robotics there's da vinci there's the navigation uh, that we also have at our institution and we uh, daily use and you all, you always need to uh, be able to keep an open mind and change your plans accordingly and ultimately ultimately you need to be relentless and uh, be able to embrace unnecessary discomforts uh, this is a nice editorial that i uh, was reading uh, some days ago and um, uh, some people that l taught me how to be relentless and how to deal with this uh, very difficult uh, field are my mentors uh, so uh, one is uh, 34, the other is 44, their name are Andrea and Carlo, and uh, they're both my mentors, and it's kind of hilarious because I am 24, one is 34, the other 44, so we are kind of 10 years apart, and the other guys you see in the pictures are other uh, residents, uh, which are really good friends of mine and which I had the um, privilege and honor to uh, share uh, time with them in the OR, in numerous surgeries, scrubbing uh, as a second operator for them. And this is Ali. This is, uh, he is now an attending. He became an attending this year. I, I performed with him lots of surgeries as, a, as, him, as his second operator and uh, we became really great friends. He taught me so much and uh, yeah, it was great. And those are some pictures of them. Uh, those are all my friends, residents, nurses uh, from the hospital. And that, those are some pics from the OR, the elevators, the ward, and, uh, and so on. And uh, this is the one picture of the cafeteria and the offices uh, that we have there. And uh, more pictures. Uh, yes, also some goofy ones. And um, uh, then, uh, yeah, I put also some pictures of my mentor. This is Carlo, uh, my older, older mentor. And... Uh, uh, instead, this is Andrea, my youngest one. They, they're very uh, skilled surgeons, both of them. Very good. They taught me a lot of things. And this is the, the cafeteria. And um, yeah, those, these are the, uh, those uh, are the OARMs I was talking about. And uh, here uh, we were performing a spinopelvic fixation uh, in conjunction with the orthopedic department. And uh, yeah, those are some more pictures of the OR. And these are pictures of the cafeteria, elevator, and uh, all this kind of stuff. And then about myself, uh, I'm a, I used to be a soccer fan. I don't watch soccer as much. Uh, I am a Juventus fan, and uh, but I, I usually watch the games when there's more important games. Uh, I don't have as much time as before, to be honest. I used to play water polo uh, in Catania and then uh, rugby played six years and six years of each of them. Uh, really love Richie McCoy. He was the All Blacks captain. And uh, those two are uh, nicknamed the Kamikaze Kids because uh, they usually put their head where nowhere else, uh, nobody else would put, not even their foot. And uh, yeah, some passions of mine is reading books. Those are some books that I just read uh, lately. And I am a big fan of the Neurosurgery Podcast and a huge uh, podcast listener. And uh, if I had to choose my favorite movie, it probably would be The Lord of the Rings, uh, based on uh, the fact that I watched it like 20 times, probably, the whole saga. Uh, my favorite TV show is probably The Office, uh, being the only one that I watched two to three times entirely. And I love the Seattle Science Foundation. Means means a lot to me to be here, because uh, I used to uh, watch all their videos uh, since I was in the second year of med school. and kind of has been my spine academy in a way because it uh, kind of steered me toward the right path, toward the right resources and taught me a lot of stuff uh, that I know today. Uh, and also their uh, um, rivals, uh, the Virtual Global Spine Conference, is pretty good um, uh, channel uh, to learn some, some spine surgeries. So uh, those are some other podcasts that I'm listening, that I usually listen. And uh, this year, I'm really enjoying the third season of the Baron Neurosurgery Basecamp, which is actually pretty cool, to be honest. I can't stop listening, listening to Michael Lawton uh, talking about neurosurgery. And uh, I love all spine surgery. I love deformities. I love degen. I love uh, infections, uh, trauma. 
but my soft spot is probably spine tumors and spine oncology. My favorite symposium over SSF is um, the spine tumor course, which is actually uh, coming up uh, in the next month. And uh, uh, my my idol kind of is uh, Stefano Boriani, we, which is a, an orthopedic surgeon, an Italian orthopedic surgeon. He was based in Bologna and now he's in Milan. And uh, he actually wrote probably half the papers in the uh, contemporary literature about spine oncology. He's one of the legends of uh, spine oncology. And he's a guy that I, I looked up to and I wish I can become uh, as good as him in the future. And that's a picture I took at the Eurospine uh, 2021, I think, or 2022, two years ago, uh, in which uh, I was hiding behind those plants uh, to uh, uh, attend the breakfast session, which I could not attend, uh, to just listen to uh, Boriani and Lawrence Rines present cases and talk about uh, spine tumor cases and uh, and stuff like that. So that's where I first uh, saw him for the for the first time, and that was actually pretty cool. Uh, well, that was one of my first congresses, and um, uh, this is where uh, one of the places I could end up to. Uh, it, this is Humanitas. It's a br pretty big hospital in. Um, in Milan, actually, and uh, that's where my mentor is actually going now. He's moving from Bergamo there, and that's where I hope uh, one day I can work in during re residency and probably uh, uh, create a huge spine oncology center, becoming the biggest referral center in Italy. And uh, this was my first congress in which I presented uh, two uh, works, uh, one on um, the use of short contracts, uh, short constructs and uh, sublaminar bands uh, for treatment of thoracolumbar fractures. This is just a case. And um, then uh, another uh, work I was working at uh, is a spine jack application in the thoracolumbar bus fractures, A3, A4. And this is a case of a, a young lady uh, with an A4 fractures treated by the application of spine jack device. And I actually worked on 12 patients with 13 total fractures, and um, uh, I was I measured the regional kyphosis angle, the vertebral body height, and the AP diameter of the canal. And uh, the actual cool findings uh, were the 70% uh, loss of correction at uh, follow-up that I uh, uh, calculated by looking at all the imaging of these patients. And uh, this is some other application that we are using the spine jack device for and treatment of thoracolumbar bus fractures uh, uh, in conjunction with the uh, uh, shunts, uh, shunts pins, uh, so USS fracture. And uh, those are some other cases that we, uh, that we usually do. Uh, we also, we have a pretty, uh, pretty nice oncology center uh, in, uh, in our center and uh, we treat mainly uh, metastasis, spine mets. Uh, we don't usually treat primary bone tumors because those are more uh, referred to uh, Milan, to um, uh, either Besta or uh, Galeazzi and Bologna. And uh, yeah, we also have pretty big trauma center. We deal with spinopelvic fractures or um, yeah, these are, this is another spinopelvic fracture or also uh, other kinds of metastases. We started with uh, pretty big constructs. Now we deal with uh, percutaneous constructs uh, to level above, to level below. We use the ultrasound on a regular basis and uh, we have now advanced uh, towards a short construct with cement augmentation. But also we also kind of see uh, any kinds of stuff, congenital anomalies such as this one. And um, yeah. Okay. And yeah, other kinds of fractures such as lux facets. And yeah, I'm, this underwent pedoncular fixation at C6 and 7. And for aminotomy, our uh, Angman fractures, this underwent a C2, C3 discectomy. And yeah, that's, that's all I got. Thank you very much.